Terry, what more do we know about these officers who were relieved of duty? Well, we know that the sixth officer relieved of duty is Preston Hemphill, as you heard in the piece. And his attorney says that he did not go to the second location. He was only at the initial Hey, everybody. I am Reverend Cynthia Curtis, and I just wanted to pop in uh, on this, the first day of February, and talk to you a little bit about this case with Tyree Nichols, uh, a little bit about uh, how it ties in with the word and things in these end times and uh, these last and evil days as we know it. Um, today they're releasing that the sixth police officer has been removed uh, named Preston Hemphill. Uh, they were a part of this unit. Let me uh, let you hear it play out a little bit. representing the family of Tyree Nichols says that he will hold a press conference later today and people who say they've been brutalized by the Scorpion unit will speak. We do want to mention that we asked the Memphis Police Department about this and they did not want to comment on those allegations against the Scorpion unit, which as you know, has now disbanded. Diane. All right, Stephanie Ramos in Memphis. Thank you, Stephanie. And let's bring in a former... Okay, and so uh, that's playing uh, from one of the news stations there in Memphis where uh, my own pastor, Pastor Jamal Bryant, has flown to uh, be there alongside of uh, Al Sharpton, uh, Benjamin Crump, and a, a lot of that team that goes in uh, with their efforts to, uh, one, bring peace, to, two, uh, find resolve for those families whose children have been wrongly beaten, bruised, uh, killed, uh, whatever the situation may be. And so uh, Preston Hemp Hill, uh, the sixth member now to be uh, removed from service as a police officer there in Memphis. Uh, the other five uh, knowing uh, were all uh, black African-American men, uh, this being the sixth uh, who was the one with the taser uh, trying to tase Tyree Nichols uh, even after he was submitted and still on the ground, the kicking and the beating uh, that he endured was absolutely absurd. It should have never gone on to anybody's child, whether black, white, Asian, Latino. Uh, it was unnecessary, completely unnecessary for the stop. Uh, and at some point, uh, the police departments are going to have to look at the demeanor of those men uh, and the character of the people that they're hiring and bringing in uh, to have this team, uh, the Scorpion uh, team undercover uh, that goes in, but uh, they appear to be the perpetrators. So if they're supposed to be looking for the perpetrators and then they then become perpetrators, uh, they should be dealt with as the perpetrators and find themselves in jail. And so uh, I know uh, in California before leaving there, uh, there were some teams that developed uh, in the Los Angeles area as well as uh, the Orange County, Tustin area. There are teams, the secret teams that they have undercover. And those men uh, and women uh, don't always do what they're supposed to, to do. Uh, they believe that they're held to a different standard of the law, and they're not. When you take a job to protect and serve the people, that's just what you're there to do, is to protect and serve. You are not there to kill, maim, and murder just because you are free to wear a weapon and to pull it uh, because it's your job. Your job is to assess the situation and your surroundings and then to secure them, to secure uh, whatever is going on during that time. And so all of those people, all of those men have broken protocol for what their job entails. And as you can see, uh, it is starting to come out where they are being fired, they are being released. And uh, I believe that they need to lose their pensions as well because um, you have taken the life of a young man uh, from a mother and a father whom they'll never see again. And so uh, when you turn to the wrong side and you have taken a job on the right side, it has to be dealt with. And so uh, for those of you, if you have your Bibles, the word that um, I'm going to come from on this is not what I was coming from initially, but I want to speak on it because uh, these are high times. I myself have been the victim of police brutality, uh, of police misconduct several times over. Uh, I mean, many people have heard it just in listening uh, in the background, just in listening and being on the phone. 
uh, just being in a park, sitting in the car, just being uh, pulled over, being aggressively stopped, being disrespected um, in, in various places, uh, just finding that people don't do their job anymore uh, of the oath that they took. Uh, to protect and serve, that they come out already with a bias of a situation without ever giving the person a chance to prove him or herself uh, in, in the scenario that's going on. And so this has to be dealt with. Uh, and I'm glad to see that all of these men are being pulled uh, from their work situation um, because we don't need those kind of people on the street. We do not need those kind of officers on the street. And uh, I, I believe they need to go back and look at some of the other officers who they've freed, who they allowed to uh, just still continue to have their job. Um, we There's a situation, you know, that these officers are black. And so now they've gotten the highest penalty of the law. But what about the other white officers who did the same, who did not receive the same? They were let off uh, where they were off with pay, uh, they were let off with um, time served, if you will, uh, whatever time that they had under the investigation, that they did not receive any time in jail, uh, or as soon as the case was out of the public's eye, uh, they said, oh, everybody will forget about it, and then those officers were released. Um, and so we have to keep our eye on cases like this to make sure that uh, right is deemed right and wrong is deemed wrong, and the penalties are paid forward because uh, a lot of these officers uh, many times get off um, and are pulled out with by judges uh, and they do not serve the time that they were handed down. So we will be watching this case. Um, but again, if you have your Bibles, uh, come go with me to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 33. Uh, and um, I'll start at verse number one. And it says, Woe to you who plunder, though you have not been plundered. And you who deal treacherously, though they have not dealt treacherously with you. When you cease plundering, you will be plundered. When you make an end of dealing treacherously, then will deal, then will, they will then deal treacherously with you. And so uh, there's a prayer in verse 2 that comes from the people and it says, O oh Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you, be their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people shall flee. When you lift yourself up, the nation shall be scattered and your plunderers shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar as the running to and fro of locusts. He shall run upon them. The Lord is exalted for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And so this word comes here at a time when Assyria was coming against Israel and uh, they were praying that the Lord would cover them because they were being coming against by Assyria for no reason they were being dealt treacherously with in that time and we all know that God had put a covenant between himself and Israel that whomever would come against Israel that he would take care of that he would deal with and so in this uh, if you go down to verse number uh, 10 it says that now I will rise says the Lord now I will be exalted now I will lift myself up you shall conceive chase, chafe, you shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you, and the people shall be like the burnings of lime. Like thorns cut up, they shall be burned in the fire. Hear you who are far off what I have done, and you who are near acknowledge my might. And so God steps into this battle for the people of Israel. And he says, I will not allow you to go down for something you did nothing in. And so 
this speaks to a time where we're at when we as black African American people have been killed, we have been beaten, we have been taken down, we have been pulled out of jobs, we have been pulled out of gyms, we have been pulled out of places for no reason, we have been pulled out of stores because you look like somebody driving down the street, you might be somebody, I am somebody, I'm my mother and father's child, I'm the child of God. Uh, it makes no sense when I hear that you look like somebody. No, you need to come with more information. You need to come with facts before you pull somebody out of their car. You need to come knowing that your job that you took was to protect and serve, not to kill and maim. And so God in this day would come and he would fight the battle for the people of Israel. And so... Uh, understanding that we're in a time and the comparison that I'm doing is that there are times that these situations can be handled in a manner of just allowing the person to one stay in their car two just speaking to the person with respect through the window three acknowledging what it is that they're stopping them for and what is the next step of what's happening Every time a person is told to get out their car, we continue to have this scenario. And so something needs to be put in place where either the person stays in their vehicle and they provide the information that's needed, or if it's a high profile case where this person may have warrants uh, or and it calls for more than one cop car uh, coming, that there is a superior, the, the watch commander would come out something of that nature maybe we need less police and more watch commanders more supervisors sergeants if you will and so uh if the police can't control their anger and frustration when they're supposed to be the leaders in these types of situations maybe we need less police and again more sergeants more watch commanders that go out maybe it's an officer and a watch commander instead of two officers that have uh, the same equal authority that aren't supportive to maintain the demeanor and the character of that officer that is going left at a time when it's not needed. And so uh, for those of you who have yourself been wrong, those of you who have been profiled, I, when I first bought uh, my convertible car, I remember being stopped and I turned to get into the, the left turning lane and then the turning signal came became green and I turned at the light and then the officer put his light on me and I asked him what's the reason you stopped me and his response was whose car is this and I said it's my car what is the reason that you stopped me officer and then he asked me proceeded to ask me how much does a car like this cost which is purely out of line the questioning is out of line um, at any point when you're stopped the officer male or female should tell you why he or she stopped you and for this officer to stop me because I'm a black woman driving a convertible car with the top down and he didn't think that I should have this car is out of order I had done nothing wrong and then he proceeded to say well you swerved into the turning lane and I said no I turned to get into the turning lane that's what you do at a turning signal and so at that point, I proceeded to turn my phone on to record. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm recording it because if you're going to stop me with a bogus stop, then I'm going to record so that your watch commander can view this and your camera so he can hear both sides. And then the officer, oh, I don't want any trouble. And I said, I didn't either. I said, I simply left my house to go somewhere not to be stopped because I'm a black African-American woman driving in a car that you think is too much for me to have. And as if that wasn't enough, he said, well, that's fine. Uh, you go ahead and go on your way. And then he said, well, where were you going? And I said, I was going to Wingstop to get some chicken wings. Those of you know, that's a stereotype uh, that's often given to us about chicken. However, I said, would you like to have lunch with me, sir? And you too can have some chicken. And he looked at me and he was like, never mind, never mind. You go about your way. And so... Uh, I tried to make light of a situation that did not make sense. And so the stop with Tyree did not make sense for this young man to lose his life senselessly 
uh, with four, uh, five African American male men that looked like him, kicking and beating on him, spraying him with pepper spray, and all the other things that went forth. Uh, the others trying to taste the lack of assistance uh, from uh, EMT, all of these things, uh, him not getting uh, to the hospital in a timely fashion, knowing uh, as they held him up, punching him like he was a punching bag and his body already looked limp and lifeless. Um, but to the strength of a black man, he still laid there on the ground and you see, you begin to see his legs start to move. And he was muscling up power and he began to call for his mother. And so uh, there has to be some resolve that these officers know that when a person is down, you do not pick them up and cause them more bodily harm. You do not do that. <clears throat> and so uh, liken to when God has his hand on his people, when God has covered a people, you do not put your hand on on those people i'm seeing in this last days that too many of god's sent ones his prophets his uh pastors his teachers are being uh disrespected they're being pulled down they're being set up they're sending men and women to come at people to try and pull them down to make them look bad and so i'm saying to you the same thing that the bible says uh in chapter 33 of isaiah Verse one, it says, woe to you who plunder, though you have not been plundered yourself and you who deal treacherously, though they have not dealt treacherously with you, that you are going to find yourself in a heap of trouble. If you don't stop trying to set up the men and women of God, if you don't stop coming and taking from the men and women of God, if you don't stop what you're doing, this evil that's going forth in the land that God is going to expose and those systems whether their government whether their state whether their county will begin to be shut down those men and women that are working undercover in those those teams that call yourself observing other people following people around and sending your own family members to be a part of it you will be going to prison those are federal offenses. When you signed on, you signed on not to harass someone that you know. You signed on not to ever pull up family members' information. You signed on not to disrespect, follow, and harass people. You are there to do whatever the duty calls for of the job. But there are some men and women that are going over and beyond their job to go and take from men and women in government systems because they feel those people should not have what they have or they feel they should not be chosen uh, or uh, be able to purchase certain things because they're on systems like social security, because they're uh, in systems like disability, uh, unemployment, uh, different uh, systems where they ask you uh, uh, if you go for cash aid or you go for EBT uh, with social services and you have to give account of what you have. You have to give uh, your a registration paper, a copy to them for your car. And then they're going and cutting keys to your car and going into people's cars and stealing and stealing the cars even. And so this is a time of God exposing and bringing to the light those things that are happening here in this earthly realm among uh, the fighting that is starting to kick back up on even this land uh, that is God's land, uh, if you will, where Jesus has walked, uh, even in the, the war with Russia that's going on. Uh, these things are trivial and should have been able to be resolved with men and women talking, meeting of the minds at the tables, not using weapons of mass destruction, not using bombs, not using all of these tanks and things to kill off the people just to steal the land, not burning people's houses down just to steal the land or to purchase the house next to it uh, at a lesser amount because now the land value has gone down since the house burned down next door. And so we have to begin to look at how evil is raising its head and how these uh, different people 
are walking in the spirit of antichrist the antichrist they may not be the actual antichrist but they are walking in a spirit of antichrist when you are destroying the people of god when you are destroying the churches of god uh i've noticed here uh in georgia and it has happened to even a church that i found that was my family's church here uh they are gutting churches and then turning them into restaurants they are serving alcohol on consecrated land. Uh, they are purposely buying up buildings that were churches and turning them into bars and restaurants. To me, that is a sign of disrespect for the consecrated ground of what it was as a church. And so uh, to those churches that you might be selling out, knowing what it is to become, I don't know if God is going to hold you accountable in that sale because you might want to think that ground was consecrated unto God, what is happening. Um, and if those uh, entities are being purposely burned down just to get that land, uh, we have to look at that. We have to remember what happened to Lake Lanier. We have to remember what happened to the Black Wall Street. These are things that have become repetitive in our today's society that people think they can just burn people out as Putin is doing in Russia. He is just burning down the land. He's bombing the land just so he can come back and take the land. And so I heard uh, one of the men say during a press conference that uh, Ukraine is fighting our battle. And so I don't know how true that is, but uh, I'm going to do my due diligence to do some research to find out what this war is really about over there because we know it used to be the USSR before the United Soviet Union uh, Repu of Republic and it was one, they were like cousins and uh, th that land between Russia and Ukraine and then they separated and so now Russia's fighting to take that land back over and biblically this is talked about in Revelations of the, the five kingdoms that would fall and then the one that would be uh, raising its head again that would try to rise and I believe that that kingdom is Russia and it's trying to rear its head again as the way it was uh, taking hold of all of that land that it is trying to take over and so we need as America need to have our eyes open that we don't give away the weaponry that we would need during a war or that they can duplicate to turn around and come back and use on us and so we have to remain vigilant in knowing that our god will provide our god will protect us our god will cover us and our god will not allow the enemy to take hold of us that he will cover us in the situation and times when we've done nothing wrong and the enemy keeps coming to attack us coming to attack us coming to steal and kill and destroy as we know his character is but that god would raise up a standard against him that he said peace be still know that he is our god and that he will go in and he will take the battle we don't have to fight that battle but god will go in and take the battle if we lay it at his feet if we call him at his word and so god says uh even in this text he says now i will rise says the lord now i will be exalted said the Lord now I will lift myself up God will rise up against the enemy in the time that they come against you for no reason when they have no reason to come against you when you have done what you are supposed to do and the enemy just continues to keep trying to pull you down and pull you down and pull you down and God said that he would raise up a standard against him and that enemy will fall they will not be able to conquer the land they will not be able to conquer you in your situation that god's word and his will will go forth in your life and so today i don't know who that word is for that you're going through uh situations where the enemy is rising up and they're trying to take maybe they're trying to take your house maybe they're trying to take your car maybe uh they're trying to uh lay you off or fire you on the job and you know that you've done nothing wrong, but you've got some boss that's not right. You've got some coworker that's not right. And many times they try to blackball people out of work situ situations. And we have to pray and cover people when we know that they're going through, when the enemy is tightening the grip, 
when the enemy is coming against people, we have to know that that's a time for us to turn over our plate. That's a time for us to fast and pray. That is the time for us to walk upright before the Lord and allow him to come in and fight the battles for us. And when we see that a brother and sister, a brother or sister is falling, they're failing, that they're doing everything they know how, that's when we have to gird them up. We have to get behind them and help to hold them up. We have to be able to be there to meet the needs of that brother or sister, of that pastor, that preacher, that teacher, that prophet, that evangelist, uh, that missionary, whoever is out there on the battlefield for the Lord. We have to remember to cover them when they go. We have to remember to cover them while they're gone. And we have to remember to cover them as they return because the enemy is seeking. He's going to and from seeking whom he may devour. We know that he's slick. We know that he's slimy. We know he's crafty. We know that he knows how to get in subtly and he has crept into the church and he is causing battles to take place in the church. He is causing people to compete. He's causing people to come against uh, the men and women of God. He's causing people to come in and to steal, to take, to try and pull down what God has set up. And God said that the enemy has put his hand on his territory and he will no longer allow it, that he will begin to expose the enemy. He will begin to expose those that are working underhanded, that are evil intent, those who mean no no good thing to God's people he will pull you down in these last and evil days because God will always raise up a standard and come against when it's his namesake when it's about his namesake he will rise up and he will deal with the enemy just as David said about Goliath he said who is this uncircumcised Philistine that will come against and try to defy the armies of God and David rose up in himself and was able to defeat Goliath wholeheartedly he went up and and Goliath laughed at him he said who is this child that you've sent to come and think that he can tear me down and just as as, as he stated that David said I will have your head I will take you down and David did sling that slingshot until that rock bit it lodged into his forehead and Goliath was dead and so there are Goliaths coming down there are giants falling there are systems that are failing and they are falling and so we have to know that God will cover his own we have to stay in his good graces we have to stay in his hands we have to stay in the safety of the shadows of our God and knowing that as long as we grab hold of him and what does the song say it said is your anchor holding is your anchor set what that grips the solid rock that solid rock that solid rock is Jesus that solid rock is our Lord and Savior and so you need to be sure that your election is made sure we all have tests and trials we all may fail the Bible tells us that a righteous man falls seven times but he gets up he never stays down. He is not defeated if he is a child of God. God will reach in and snatch him out of the fire as he did for the as he did for his men. He will reach in and he will handle a situation as he did with Daniel. And so we have to also know that God will reach into our situation that whatever it is, it is not the all the tell all or the be all. It is not the end all. The fat lady has not sung because God has the final say that he will exalt whom he has chosen. <clears throat> he will lift them up in the time that it has need of them being exalted, that he will pull down those who have not walked worthy to the call in his name. He will begin to stop them from sowing seeds of discord and pulling down when they didn't need to pull down. God knows who he has selected. He has handpicked who he has chosen to go forth. And just as he did with David, he has chosen some people that are like David. He has chosen them that are in the raw. They are in the rough as a diamond. And so people may not see all that shines on them yet, but God will bring it out. God will give them that time that's needed to come into fruition for their gift, their call to work as he has stated it shall, as he has loved on his children and, and handpicked those that will walk according to the call, those that will go in his name, those that will pull down when they need to pull down, those that will build up 
as they need to build up as we know that he was a carpenter and a carpenter is a builder so though he spent those years before as a carpenter building things building for the people in the town he now turned in his last his three years of ministry to build for the kingdom of god and to bring all back to righteousness so that they understood that yes he was the messiah he was the sent one he was sent to be the savior mary's baby that loved us so that he gave all that he had he endured the cross they hung him high they stretched him wide you know that's baptist right there and we know that the story didn't end there that he went down in the grave he got up with the keys to i always say death hell and the grave because it doesn't matter if you're dying it doesn't matter if you're in the grave as with lazarus that he can cause you to rise again and it doesn't matter if your situation looks like it's down in the grave that you're on your last leg that the you're down to the last count god can reach in and snatch you out of that situation and bring you up wash you off dry you off and show you as pure gold he will show that you have been purified by the fire and that no one and no nothing can bring you down what god has for you they cannot take down what god has exalted and so doors will be open doors will be shut that god has opened and god is shut and no other man can open or shut them but the lord when he sees fit and so for those of you who are out there you know that you're not walking his call again we've all made mistakes we've all had to brush ourselves up we all had to look at situations and say how did i get there and god had to show us who we really are and say i need you my sister or my brother to come back to the call to walk worthy and to march soldier march on man your post don't leave your post continue to contend for the faith continue to fight for the rights of God's children that whoever it is that will come up against the armies of God that they will be taken down that they will fail their mission will fail because we are on the battle for the right team and we know in the end that we win say it with me that we win the battle God's children will win the battle and those that come against the house of God shall fall and so I pray that if there's someone out there and you do not uh, know the Lord as you should, you do not have a relationship with, with God as you should, you have not come into the knowledge of Christ, that he died for your sins, that he has uh, come to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, that he has come so that you may one day come to reign and to, to be by his side in heaven, that you will not die uh, and that be the end, that you will live through all eternity with God. And so... I say to you today, we're praying for those people, uh, those nations that are being fought uh, treacherously for no reason. We're praying for those nations uh, and all the people that have been lost through wars and, and, and battles that were unnecessary. We're praying that God would take their souls to be with him. We're praying uh, for husbands and wives to come together to love one another. As we're entering into this month of February, I always call it the month of love, a black history month, uh, that we uh, as men and women would love one another, that we would come to find unity uh, through Christ, that we would be able to love our brother and our sister. He said, how else will they know that you are mine, but that the love that you have for one another. And so I'm praying today that those who are looking for love, those that are seeking love, those that want to be loved, that their mate would find them this month, not next year, this month, that their mate would come to them. And for them that are out there who are the ones to seek their mate, that you would get up and be about the business, the fervency of the kingdom of God, that they would go forth, come together and be teens in a household fighting for God, loving on your neighbors, loving on your children, loving on your parents, whatever the case may be, helping at your church, volunteering, being a part, that God would use you for such a time as this in his kingdom to prepare the bride that he's coming back to get. And so for this, I'd like to say thank you. I know I haven't been on there in the last couple of weeks, but I'm going to uh, pull it back together. We have a name for the show. 
Uh, we have everything going forth. I'm going to just break it out. You are now welcomed officially to the queen's table. The queen's table. We will sit and we will discuss the issues of the community. We will discuss the issues of the church. We will discuss the word of God. We will preach. We will pray. We will minister to those that will be online. Uh, so look for it. Stay tuned. Uh, we are pulling it all together. And so uh, I have not just been MIA as some have thought. I am not down, baby. I might have had a down moment, but don't ever count me out because this is one super bad sister. And as my pastor preached the other night, I am a wonder woman. And you just keep on wondering what, what is going on because God is moving. God is big. God is doing big and great things. They are just lining up. And once we get all of those that are, uh, I'm going to call them crabs, crabs in a barrel. They're trying to pull down those that are doing good for God. God will pour the water in that barrel and drown them all out. They're just noise on the side. I'm hearing nothing. All that they did, God still didn't let it prosper. God did not let it take me down. God did not let it bring me down. That I am even stronger through the battles that they tried to present. All that they tried to steal, God has replaced and will replace and will give back. God has made them put back things that they have stolen. And so we need to understand that God advocates for us. Jesus sits on the right side of the Father and he advocates for us that we would have what God said we should have. That the promises of God, the promises of Abraham that are on our lives will come forth. That the blessings will flow. They will come down upon us that we will receive we shall be blessed those who bless us shall be blessed those who curse us shall be cursed that all the the land where our feet shall trod that shall he give us the territory to go in and to battle satan and to take that ground for god to take that territory back to allow those men and women to what to gracefully grow in christ to be saved to have salvation, to be able to learn about God, to be able to know who he is in the strength of his might, knowing that he is mighty in battle. He is the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is no other God bigger, badder than our God. And so when we stand up for him, he shall stand up for us. And so today I say to you, know that your God can and he will. He is able and he shall do just what he said he shall do. And again, thank you for coming to the Queen's Table. God bless you.